1997 was a year of rebirth for the New York Jets. A team that won only one game the previous season enjoyed one of the most dramatic turnarounds in NFL history. Under new coach Bill Parcells, the Jets won nine games and posted their first winning record in nine years. Let's go, Marvin. Run and hit, man. Let's go, Lonnie. Let's go, Jumbo. Huh? They'll, have, they'll be isolating you, Jumbo, tonight. Here we go, Lamont. Just relax, man. This ain't nothing but football. <laughs> Hand off, Morrell plowing through a hole. And this Jets defense coming up huge. Give Hugh Douglas the big play on that one. Keyshawn Johnson hauled it in. He got behind the coverage. He caught it. There you go. There you go. Play action. Bledsoe fires near side. It's picked off. Intercepted by Mo Lewis. He's at the 30. At the 20. Down the right side. He is in. Touchdown. Jets. Yeah, that looks like a football team now. Tasker moves ahead. Makes the catch. He is level. And the Jets are just pouring it on. This crowd in a frenzy. Oh, baby. Wow, what a difference a year makes. Hey, hey, listen, we need to go. Let's break it. Everybody oh, put their blocks and let's just break it. Let's go big play on three. One, two, three. Here we go. Christie kicks it off from right to left. Glenn makes the catch on the five-yard line. Moves ahead to the 20-yard line. Glenn to the 25. He's to the 30. Glenn across midfield. He's to the 40. It's a foot race. Glenn to the 30. To the 20. He's gone. Down the right side. Touchdown, Jets. Wow, what a play. In 1997, the Jets let nothing stand in their way to a winning season. They went into the final week still alive for a playoff berth. They came up short against Detroit, but it did not diminish what they had accomplished during the season. In February, the Jets stirred more excitement, announcing a return to the uniform worn during the 1968 Super Bowl season. The star of that championship team, Hall of Famer Joe Namath, was on hand for the occasion. Huh? Looks great. And uh, basically, this was Mr. Parcells' idea, of course. And he sees some tradition, and we're going to get back to the future. We're talking about the future. Jets have sole possession of first place in the AFC East for the first time since week 12 of the 1986 season. And the Jets putting together a dominating performance. The Jets forged their winning attitude in the heat of summer camp. You need to be back here. Bill Parcells did much of the hands-on coaching, working with rookies like Leon Johnson. See what I'm saying? You're just wasting time. And they're running, okay? These guys come in this league. This ain't like playing Wake Forest now. Parcells took the same focused approach in the preseason. Well, that's two stupid plays we've made in about the first five minutes. Where's the wing? Time out! Who is it? He made it clear the mistakes that haunted the Jets in previous seasons would no longer be tolerated. That's what loses. That's why you won in 15, right there. Okay. Anderson! He's in there! Okay, all right, relax. Go, let go! Oh! Everybody up here, come here. Everybody up here. Get up here. All right, this next series now, we're going to turn this game around. Okay? We're going to turn this game around. Bill Parcells did indeed turn the Jets around. The team won all four of its preseason games and showed improvement every week. Second and one. Try to, we got anything to score on? O'Donnell, straight back, five step drop. Looking for the end zone, looking for Graham. He's got it, and he's in. Touchdown, Jets. Now we're working like a team here. Now we're working like a team. Maybe we'll learn how to come back, huh? Foley in the pocket, steps forward. 
White has one over the middle to the end zone. Hawk touchdown, Dedrick Ward. How many weapons does this team have offensively? You know what? You're pretty good, Foley. You're pretty good. As the regular season began, the Jets were excited and quietly confident. These players have the same dreams and hopes as, as any team starting any football season. Well, this is the, the time of year where optimism runs high for everyone. The Jets quickly put that optimism into action. On second and ten, looking long, going for the end zone. Corvette, lunging catch. Touchdown, Jets! What a catch by Wayne Corvette. What a way to open the season. The Jets scored on their first five possessions on the way to the most one-sided opening day victory in franchise history. Neil O'Donnell threw five touchdown passes, two each to Wayne Crevette and Jeff Graham, number 81. Is he in? They haven't called it. They're looking at each other. Yes! yes. Touchdown, Jets! Rookie John Hall tied a club record, kicking a 55-yard field goal on his first regular season attempt. The defense rose to the occasion and kept the Seahawks out of the end zone. Marvin Jones, number 55, made his first start at outside linebacker and led the team with eight tackles. The 38-point margin of victory was the largest ever for the Jets on the road and served notice that this was a new team with a new direction. The first shadow of doubt fell over the Jets' season with back-to-back -back losses to Buffalo and New England. In week four, the Jets returned home, hoping to get back on track but it was the Oakland Raiders who dominated the first half and appeared headed to an easy victory. You cannot do it any better than that. Thrown beautifully by George, brought it on about the 10 and took it in. The confidence the Jets built through the preseason was put to the test as the third quarter slipped away. Let's go! Who loves you? Showtime! It's showtime, Jets! Come on, Neil! Brian Hansen gave the Jets a spark with a fake punt and a pass to Corwin Brown that gained 26 yards and set up a John Hall field goal. Still, the Jets trailed by six points in the fourth quarter. They needed a big play. And once again, Corwin Brown came through. He blocked a field goal attempt, and Ray Mickens scooped up the loose ball. It's blocked away and picked up. Running down the field across midfield to the 40 to the 30, Ray Mickens, he will go the distance, touchdown Jets, what a turn of events. We talked about special teams earlier, they have been terrific. For the Jets, it marked the end of a 13 game home losing streak, and their biggest comeback victory in 12 years. The next week in Cincinnati, the Jets hitched their offense to Adrian Morrell, number 29. Morrell tied a club record with 40 rushing attempts and gained 156 yards. Morrell's runs set up play action passes to receivers like Richie Anderson, number 20, as the Jets won in Cincinnati for the first time since 1985. The Jets returned home in Week 8 to meet division-leading New England. The Patriots had beaten the Jets in Week 2 and appeared on their way to doing it again, leading 12-3 in the third quarter. The offense was stalled until Parcells sent backup quarterback Glenn Foley into the game. Parcells likes Foley, he likes his intestinal fortitude, he had a great preseason. O'Donnell was not moving this football team, and Foley will get a shot. Foley got the Jets on track, completing 14 consecutive passes at one point. The former Boston College star spread the ball around. 
he completed 17 passes to nine different receivers. When Foley wasn't throwing the ball, he was running interference for ball carriers like Dietrich Ward as the Jets opened up their offense. With the Patriots back on their heels, Morrell split the middle for a touchdown that got the Jets back in the game. What the Jets did, they showed a four wide receiver set. The New England League defense had to spread out accordingly, wide open up the middle, Morrell with a touchdown. He gives a salute to the crowd. The Jets still trailed, but they had taken the momentum away from the defending AFC champs. The defense, led by Mo Lewis and Jason Ferguson, number 72, kept the pressure on. Early in the fourth quarter, the Jets took control of the game. Jets looking for the lead. Foley looks to his right, throws, got a man open, and a touchdown! Lorenzo Neal! The victory was the Jets' first over a first-place team since 1994. The Jets' watershed game came in week 10 against the Baltimore Ravens. A cold November rain pounded down, and the Jets' offense could not seem to stay afloat. For the second straight game, Parcells called on Glenn Foley to ignite the team. The rain let up in overtime, but Foley did not, as he drove the Jets into field goal range for John Hall. Jets and Ravens all tied up in overtime. This is for the win. Pats in the holder. The snap, the put down, the kick is up, and it is good! Jets win! The Jets have sole possession of first place in the AFC East for the first time since week 12 of the 1986 season. It was a big step for the Jets and a giant leap for their rookie kicker. And we're trying to get this kid, you know, out of his diapers and into his regular street clothes. And that's really what we're trying to do. And today, you know, we took those huggies off. Because <laughs> right? that's a game winner. He took his huggies off. Number four is coming in today. Show him the poster here. Number four, Glenn Foley, that's right. He's gonna light it up in the air, okay? And they don't know if we're gonna pass, they don't know if we're gonna run. There's no pressure on this boy. Glenn Foley got his first start of the season in week 11 at Miami, and he came out firing. Foley, five-step drop. Foley under some pressure, throws. He's got Brady wide open, makes the catch of the five, into the end zone, touchdown Jets. And a perfect mix of the run and pass. Foley was picture perfect in his execution. He picked apart the Miami secondary, completing passes to the outside, then coming back with quick slants down the middle. Foley passed for 322 yards, and the Jets picked up 16 of their 20 first downs through the air. Still, the Jets trailed in the fourth quarter. With four minutes left, they mounted one more drive into Miami territory, looking for the touchdown that would tie the game. A fourth and five for the Jets from the Miami 30-yard line. 3.56 to play, Miami up by seven. Foley out of the shotgun. And he throws near side. Corbett makes the catch. And now they say it was down on the ground. Glenn Foley beside himself. There is no question he made the catch. The Jets argued, but to no avail. The officials' ruling stood. The ball went over on downs, and the Jets suffered a heartbreaking defeat. Hey, the Jets have a heck of a football team, and understand this, you could very well be playing them again. The next week, the Jets were in Chicago, where they took out their frustration on the Bears. First and 10 from the 35, Foley on a rollout, running right. 
the pump fake, looking long, deep, Keyshawn is there, he's got it, touchdown Jets! What a play, Foley to Keyshawn, he lobbed it upstairs, Keyshawn climbed the invisible ladder, and the Jets put six on the board. For the Jets, it looked like a laugher as they built a 23 to nothing lead. But in the process, they suffered a severe blow. Foley went down with a knee injury and was lost for the season. But on this day, the Jets' defense won the game. First, stopping the Bears on the ground, then sending the blitz after the quarterback. <laughs> The Bears attempted a club record 65 passes, and their quarterbacks paid the price. The Jets had a season-high five sacks and forced five turnovers, including two interceptions each by Victor Green and Otis Smith. Pressure on, pump fake, throws, it's picked off. Otis Smith has another, down the right side, across the 20, across the 10, high kicks it into the end zone. Touchdown, Jets! With the win, the Jets stayed tied with Miami for first place in the AFC East. And it's going to go in the air, let's go! In week 12, when the Jets returned to the Meadowlands, they were thinking playoffs, and every phase of their young team was kicking in. Berger puts it away from his own 11. It's a high putt. Sails to the 34. Johnson makes the catch right side. Makes a tackle across the 45. Into Minnesota territory. Across the 40. To the 30. To the 20. Leon Johnson is gone. Touchdown, Jack. You got the feeling he would break one sooner or later. He does. And the Jets are on the board first. Uh, special teams have been a big difference this year, and Leon Johnson, the rookie out of North Carolina, with a 66-yard return. Neil O'Donnell was back at quarterback, throwing to Keyshawn Johnson, who had career highs with nine catches for 104 yards. O'Donnell found tight end Fred Baxter wide open for a touchdown, and the Jets had a comfortable 23-7 lead. But the Vikings fought back. With time running out, they scored a touchdown and needed only a two-point conversion to force overtime. 60 minutes of football came down to one play. Johnson, handoff, Smith, trying to bust out to the right side, and he's thrown down at the five-yard line. The Jets hold on. They win 23-21. to The New York Jets improve to 8-4, and, and they do it in dramatic fashion. Their defense holding on, stopping a two-point conversion attempt. The Jets had a new look in 1997. It was in their eyes and in their attitude. A team that was pushed around for years finally learned to push back. For the first time in eight years, the Jets had a Pro Bowl starter in cornerback Aaron Glenn. Adrian Morrell became only the second back in team history to rush for more than 1,000 yards in back-to-back -back seasons. Bill Belichick was part of an outstanding coaching staff. Belichick rebuilt the defense with six new starters and allowed the second fewest points in the AFC. Mo Lewis had eight sacks and was voted the team's most valuable player. On special teams, John Hall boomed the league record 29 touchbacks. The Jet coverage teams were among the best, led by Corwin Brown, Chad Cascadden, and number 30, Chris Hayes. But this season wasn't about individual accomplishment. It was about coming together as a team. This is our game, man. Oh, yeah. We work too hard, man. I'm telling you, we too hard. We sit too pretty. Let's go ahead and take care of business. Win all three. One, two, three. Win! The 1997 Jets played with one spirit, one purpose, 
one driving force that became the character of a team on a mission. Late in the year, the Jets lost back-to-back -back games to Buffalo and Indianapolis. It appeared their dream of a winning season was slipping away. But while they lost their grip, the Jets and their fans never lost hope. And on week 15, they returned home to feast on playoff-bound Tampa Bay. We got some really great food here today. We got broccoli and all, pasta vazul, homemade chili, and this is what the Jets do today. They stop Dunn and all Scott. They don't even gain 100 yards between them. Mo Lewis, Marvin Jones, that's it for the whole day. for a quick throw, and it's incomplete, and picked off, intercepted by Otis Smith, down the right side, off the deflection, Otis Smith, he's to the 10, he's in, touchdown Jets, Otis Smith, 41 yards. We're still in it, we're still in it. Listen, expect the blitz, they're coming after us, expect it, okay? <laughs> Unloads near side. It's intercepted. Picked up again by Aaron Smith. Down the right side. He's got the 20. He's got the 10. And he's in. Touchdown. Aaron Smith. Second one of the day. And Anthony over there on that side. Ran a long deep out. And a very deep out. Otis Smith just read it perfectly. The two touchdown returns in one game by Otis Smith tied a league record. And there were more happy returns from Leon Johnson. Johnson finds an opening. He's across the 30. He's across the 40. Johnson into Tampa Bay territory. Down the left side. Nothing but daylight. He's gone. Touchdown. Leon Johnson. Leon Johnson bringing this crowd to its feet. And what a season he is having as a rookie. Johnson became the first Jet ever to return both a punt and a kickoff for touchdowns in the same season. The Jet defense allowed the Buccaneers only six first downs and 22 yards passing. It was a dominating performance and the Jets' first December win in four years. Morrell takes the handoff running right. Morrell's got an opening, explodes into the end zone. Touchdown, Jets! I don't know what happened. I don't know either, but that was a great job by you guys. Hope you win next Happy week. Holiday. In 1997, the New York Jets again wore the look of a winner. It was a look that evoked memories of the past. It raised hope that in 1998, the promise of today will join with the glory of yesterday and send the Jets winging back to the future.